ladies and gentlemen. I started. You can talk. All right. <laughs> Apparently, I can talk. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome to the uh, control room in CMS in action. And uh, the guides for today, let me introduce them to you. First, next to me will be uh, Peter. Peter Everard's here. He's a compatriot, if I don't. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we got two gold medals today. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, <laughs> he, uh, he's a compatriot uh, the, uh, from me from Belgium, but uh, he works at the CMS experiment and he's a, one of our professional guides as we have them. Uh, next to Peter sitting Zoltan, you'll see his fingers. I, <laughs> he's in charge of the whole process. Uh, so if you see his fist like that, you know, we the do guilty something man. wrong. What? The guilty man. Yeah, right. And uh, behind us, we have uh, Mohammed and Haifa. In fact, both of them are actually in neutrino physics. Uh, Haifa is not only in CMS, but she's also in Dune and uh, contributed to heavy. Uh, heavy neutral lepton studies and Mohamed is actually looking for heavy neutral leptons in CMS data and uh, we are about to unblind our data soon so uh, but uh, he's not allowed to talk about it yet <laughs> and then there's Noemi who is to also Noemi. help which is uh, I, this is another of the uh, the bosses mm -hmm. so at this point I leave it over to the team here to guide you around yeah, so welcome everybody to CMS. So yeah, like uh, I was already said, I'm Peter. I work here as a scientist on the CMS experiment and I've been here for 12, 13 years. So um, we will actually take you on like a small tour of CMS where uh, HiFi will basically first show you upstairs, like, you know, where CMS was assembled and also the detector on true scale. And then she will slowly go down and she will show you the actual, you know, first electronics room and then the actual detector. So we will have that. So um, yeah, now you start seeing actually HiFi well, walking around. Uh, so at first, I think you want to show the control room. Exactly. Yeah, so here we're now in the CMS control room. Here you can see us from the back. So hello everyone, welcome to CMS. And uh, here, uh, as uh, Peter just said, uh, we are in the control room where uh, people, they work on the, the detector, they control the detector and they look uh, for, uh, uh, and they look for a good, uh, data taken, as you can see here, uh, we have a shifter that is uh, looking after uh, a good data uh, taking. Uh, note that uh, now we don't have a beam, so we don't have real collisions in CMS, uh, but however, we have uh, cosmic data taken. So we collect the cosmic data for uh, calibration and uh, for commissioning works for CMS to prepare for the run clean. Here we have the uh, experts area where the experts uh, we have experts for each sub detector, so they are here sitting working on their sub detectors. Hello, Danielle. <laughs> so, yes, this is the control room. Uh, basically, uh, the control room is big, but actually, we have another part from the other side. But this is the main area where the people uh, they do their work, and the, as I said, they control our detector and uh, ensure that our detector is a good state and a good data taken. Now, uh, we go out, we are still on the surface. Here we will come back later to enter from this door to go underground. However, now we will, still, we will go to the uh, surface uh, experimental area as uh, you will see uh, later. Yeah, so uh, now we are slowly walking towards like, you know, where actually CMS was fully built. So CMS had a disadvantage compared to, you know, some of the other experiments that, you know, our cavern wasn't ready in advance. So we couldn't actually build the whole thing underground. So we basically had to assemble it above ground uh, into different slices, which we had. And then those big slices would actually have to be lowered. And I think you'll see this a little bit in a bit, but this was like slices up to 3,500 tons. So really, really heavy and really difficult. Um, so now she's entering this. Uh, this is in hole. contrast, by the way, with Atlas, who had a capper yeah. ready in time. And Catalyst is, Atlas is built like a ship in a bottle. So they let small pieces down and a stitty assembly in the cavern, 
we had to build the big pieces on surface here in this big exactly. hole, which is there. If I go ahead. Uh, she might be lost. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is due to the connection. She is moving from one room mm -hmm. to the other. All right. Um, okay. So, so you can actually get not a able to build. Uh, Hello. Yes, yes we, we have you back. You Very good. Okay. Yeah. So this is a service uh, experimental area where the detector has been built. Uh, actually, it was because it's a technical limitation that they were not able to build this, uh, the detector underground. So what they have done is that they built it here and then they divide it into pieces. And then they took each piece through the shaft here, where we see it later in more details to bring down the detector 100 meter underground. Yeah, so if you look there, you can also see uh, this concrete slab, basically the gray exactly. concrete slab. Um, that's actually, you know, it's a meter, a meter and a half of concrete, which will slide over the hole so that you can actually move the detector pieces on top of it. Then you exactly. have the crane coming from the top, which would hook into there. You would remove the ground and you would very slowly move it. The heaviest part was more than 2000 tons. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. once, once this slab is closed, we call it pit head cover, once it is closed, we can have parties on. Actually, we used to have we do. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <yes. laughs> Another thing here to say is that if you see the big picture here, the big poster, and it's actually the real size of our CMS uh, detector. And uh, it's uh, like you, you can imagine the CMS uh, experiment in front of you. It's exactly the real size, which is a very, very uh, nice uh, Peter, and also it's, uh, I think uh, you may correct me, Albert or Zoltan or Peter, that uh, it's only CMS uh, that they have such a poster and such a nice picture of it, right? Yeah, that, that, that's the problem with Atlas. They are too big to put it on a picture. Ah, yes. <laughs> 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 but, but indeed, it doesn't exclude or the validity what Haifa said. Yeah. CMS is the only. Exactly. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. But by the way, I mean, you're lucky with this visit because you're going to go down actually to the experiment. If you would have beamed, then that's the best you could see from this experiment. That's the picture on the wall there. But uh, exactly. not, not, not today, no beam today. Exactly. But it's, it's, very good, uh, it's very good news that there is no beam for us because otherwise we will not be able to see the same as experiment open. It means that the end cap is uh, away from the barrier. Otherwise it would be closed and it's not possible to see each sub detector uh, there. Yeah, but this is yeah, a dilemma. Sure. It depends on which hat you have on. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so now we go out here in front of it's um, the parking area of our CMS experiment, which, uh, uh, as you as you know, it's uh, in CMS in uh, in CC in France. It's actually a very very nice uh, place because it's actually between two very beautiful uh, mountains. Actually, here you can see the Jura mountain here, which is very very close. And also, we even have a, a ski station that is very close by. So I mean, uh, it's. It's a very fancy and it's very, uh, I mean, a uh, yeah. very good location. From no, this side, yes, please. Don't forget the signs in this uh, <laughs> exposure. Just, just kidding. Ah, oh. yes, of course. <laughs> but it's, it's, uh, you need both, right? To, you need to be uh, inspired, let's say. <laughs> so here, actually, we have the building, but uh, actually, just behind the building, and if you have uh, 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 no buildings in front of us, you can just see the, uh, the Mont Blanc. Uh, and it's yeah, actually so a very uh, nice view as well. So we are lucky to have so such a, a location here for, uh, uh, for our uh, experiment and uh, for the LSG in general. So yeah, uh, now we go back. You still hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're good, we're good. Very good, okay. Well, we will uh, see uh, the radio frequency for the for the uh, If you would like, uh, Alberto Peter, you can talk uh, about it a bit. Well, that, that's that's a component for accelerating the beams. Yeah. That's a uh, radio frequency. If, uh, for a proton machine, it's actually not the most dramatic part of the machine. Uh, for a, a lepton machine, it, it, it's much more important than that. Uh, so 
I think for us, um, it, it's nice. We have a whole area, some battery in, in one part of the machine that does that. Mm -hmm. And that gives the extra kick to get from the injection energy of 400 GeV or so to, uh, to the TV level as it is. Yeah. As it this around. is from the left one. This is actually from left. From left yeah. one. Okay. This was exactly. the iconic. See, it's a fake. Part. It's from left in a way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was the iconic. Part. But this is how an RF cavity looks yeah. like. Yeah. And actually, this was a, a room temperature. Uh, cavity, oh, okay. unlike the ones that we use since then, mm -hmm. since lab Not two. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and that's why this uh, sphere had to be installed on the top ah, to, right, to oscillate right. the the radio frequency between the the sphere and the the accelerating part. Okay, mm -hmm. but this was very very long ago. <laughs> okay, Haifa, you can move on. Very good. The elevator, so, I guess. Yeah, so now you can take over until I reach the, 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 the device to enter, okay, the pad, okay? Okay. Because I lose connection. Thank you very much. Right, see you in a moment. So, yes, um, Haifa is now slowly going to start walking back through the building towards basically, um, yeah, the the elevator. So uh, we will talk actually about the elevator a little bit later. Um, at this moment, uh, oh yeah, so <laughs> if you want, yeah, you can show it. Uh, so you. just to show once again where we are exactly. So, you know, like uh, CMS is basically the furthest away from the main CERN site in Mera. Uh, you guys are not there either because of the COVID restrictions, but normally that's where most people would come. And so we're really at the other side, at the opposite. So that, you know, like there was one experiment which was allowed to be closed, which is the Atlas experiment in the end, and we're then the furthest. It's the easiest to only cross at two spots uh, for most of the collisions. So that's why they're actually basically opposite from yeah, each other. It, it's, it's even more so that, that the more symmetric a machine is, the higher luminosity you can get. Mm -hmm. So that's why first, in fact, there were only two experiments for the LHC and they were first, they were both uh, detectors which want to have the highest possible luminosities to look for uh, happenings or, or interactions with the smallest possible cross sections among their data. And that were Atlas and CMS. And then um, they had to be opposite of the ring, not next to each other. We would like that because where Atlas is, is the cafeteria, I already told you. So we have to drive 20 minutes. Uh, but that was not optimal for the machine. So the best performance of the machine you would get with experiments on the opposite side. Mm -hmm. The other experiments came later, but they don't use uh, maximum luminosities. They, they, they are happy with lower luminosity, so that's not a problem. So still, the, the ring is relatively yeah. symmetric for, for good performance. So... Uh... I will, I will just pass by the, by the device uh, to, to answer. And then uh, once I arrive to the elevator and we will start to go down, uh, we will lose also connection. And All then right. uh, you can take over again. So now, as you can see, we are, will enter from uh, this device. This device actually uh, will check if you are allowed to enter and the ground or not, uh, because actually it's not anybody that has the permission to do that. Because actually you need a lot of courses not a lot, uh, but I mean, several courses to be able to work underground. And especially it's for safety reason, because underground, there are a lot of uh, high voltage, there are a lot of heavy stuff, and therefore you need uh, to know how to deal and uh, with these things and how to work in such environment. So to do so, we will use our dosimeter, as you can see here. The dosimeter actually has a SIM that would be that we read, as you can see, that I am allowed to go in. So I will enter. And then also something else to do is that to scan, to scan the eyes. Voila. And now I am allowed to enter. So they get this device check that this is me, this is my eyes, they're related to the dosimeter. And then they confirm that I can enter and I can go underground. As you can see here, my colleague uh, Mohammed also is doing the same uh, procedure. And now he's turning his eyes. May I have a story about it? The angels yes, and demons? So angels course. and demons, of course. Okay, we... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you remember the angels and demons uh, movie long, long ago, um, they used as well a, a, an ivory scanner. This was a fancy rounded shape, whatever. 
actually we used it for long, yeah, yeah, for several yeah. years. This is what you see is I think the third generation since then, it now it reads both heights and also the blood circulation ABIs, if you oh uh, know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I've been going down when they had the original one 10 years ago or so for, uh, uh, and, and it didn't always work, I can tell you. But, but, but okay, I'm happy they have a better thing now and it measures your blood pressure and everything at the same time and probably your sugar level also. <laughs> anyway, angels and demons in the real. As you can see now, I'm calling the, the elevator, which is uh, which was uh, eight meet, 80 meter underground, and now it's coming. So basically, um, to just say that uh, our uh, experimental area is composed underground from mainly two parts, which are the service cavern and experimental caverns. And uh, the service cavern is in minus one and minus two, if I'm not mistaken, and the experimental cavern is uh, the the uh, at minus 100 the, the last one so the the idea is that we will see why together uh, later why we have these two uh, areas separately we will uh, talk about it in a minute we will lose connection sorry about that <laughs> okay. well we, we used to lose the connection on the way down mm -hmm. not the way up okay <laughs> <laughs> this is a... yeah peculiarity of the, the 4G networks, uh, especially roaming from one country to the other. So uh -huh. the, the roaming from France to Switzerland has hiccups. This is what you are going to see well, immediately now. Uh, but on the way back from Switzerland to France, it goes much smoother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Yeah, so here they're also in the elevator. Actually in CMS, we have a thing that, you know, our elevator is, our safe zone so like you know at the moment there's any fire or any gas leak or anything you basically have to be close to the elevator because there's actually overpressure being put into you know uh the area of the elevator and so it's always the safest place to be so we're actually being told that we're not allowed to take the stairs up also because you know like the 100 meter stairs will like it will get tiring i mean not everybody can make it yeah not, 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 not everybody would survive think, just doing the stairs. yeah i think a lot of us have done it though in the past <laughs> well i i never i never okay I <laughs> all right this is level two so, I guess. Yeah. yes yes exactly i i i came back so <laughs> And uh, now we will enter to the first part of our experiment, which is the service cavern. Here is the shaft, as you can see, and we'll be seeing more details later. I'm not sure that you can see it, <laughs> but much. yes, you are. The... Yes, thank you. I will give you. I'll give you. Yeah, so you can. Ah, right. That's uh, looking upwards yeah. to the surface. It, this is surface elements which come through there okay thank you Mohammed. yes thanks to okay. Mohammed. he is much longer than me <laughs> <Hold> <laughs> so now we enter to the, the service cavern yes here is the service cavern the idea to have two separate areas is because when you have a data taken and you have a beam and uh, where the entrance to the experimental area is not possible. Uh, at least uh, we, uh, we, we, what we do, what uh, they did is that they put uh, the, the, the electronics in a different area where they can access in case that there is a cable that needs to be changed or something like that. So they don't have to stop the experiment to change a cable. This is one of the reasons uh, why uh, we have uh, two different areas. And then you can see here you have uh, racks, uh, the racks are basically cupboards of electronics. Here we have uh, basically the, the trigger, uh, our trigger uh, system, which is basically uh, uh, the, the device uh, to decide. Uh, here we have the detector safety system. And for the, for, the, for the trigger, we are going to the trigger. Now, here is the trigger, yes. You can see here the trigger and the DAC. So the trigger is actually a device that tells you and decide whether to keep an event or not from collisions and DAC is the data acquisition system. For our trigger, for example, is composed from two different, two main uh, parts. 
actually there is the level one uh, uh, trigger, which is the first step of the trigger, which actually has a rate of uh, 100 kilohertz event in about in less than four microseconds. And also then, so then we have a 100 kilohertz, and then we have a second level of the trigger, which is the high level trigger, which actually ends up with a one kilohertz event as a rate, which actually decide on the events after running a full, but a fast reconstruction, full reconstruction events. So yes, so our trigger system, and the summary is composed from two different uh, different subsystems. Here uh, you can see uh, different uh, power supply. Here, for example, we have the power supply of uh, one of uh, our uh, million chambers, and actually it's one of the million chambers that Peter is working on, which is uh, the gem, the gas electron multiplier, which basically you can see it here. I'm advertising your detector, Peter. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we only have half installed because there's only one part which is installed now and the rest will be installed in a few years from now. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> so it's partly a part of the upgrade. Yeah. And I also worked on, I printed the stickers. Okay. So <laughs> installed them as well. <laughs> but we, uh, More I, optical I, fibers. Yes. I don't know if you're going to say that, but um, for the, the second trigger you, you talked about, which is the high level trigger. Uh, yes. The most important yes. component is sitting up here above our heads here in the control room, which are the uh, computers which are being used exactly. for um, yes. uh, for that. So the data is taken 100 meters up in these computers. And I don't know how many there are, 1,000, 2,000? Yeah, so, so, so the, the, the pass through processes. of the level one is, is 100 kilohertz? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but the, the, the number of processors. Uh, what? 15,000 15, CPUs. CPUs. Yeah, CPUs. Okay, so. 15,000 CPUs it is you know last time I left it was 2,000 now it's 15,000 so things inflate anyway <laughs> so the which you need to decide just to decide whether we want to keep that event and store it somewhere mm -hmm. and and that's all it does for that already you need this 15,000 CPUs standing above here deciding that so that's, uh, that gives you some idea of, of the event rate, uh, which is being exactly. produced. So actually we exactly. have 40 million bunch crossings per second, and we have 120 million data channels. Mm. If we would read, if we would want to read them out, we would need a multiple terabit per second network, which actually doesn't exist in mm -hmm. the technology yet. Even if we could pump it up, we wouldn't have technology to store it. Right. and and finally, we would never be able to reconstruct it. So that's the reason why yeah. we do the, need to, to make the, a selection. The, the simple example I would give is if we would not cut the data, if we would not have cut the data, and uh, we would have still not have discovered the Higgs boson in the first year of data taking, because we hadn't processed everything that there is just no mm -hmm. CPU power available to do that. So we have to do that. There is always a risk with the triggers for the, for the, uh, uh, LHC, that's that's a well-known thing, but it's a calculated risk. And it did work, at least for the Higgs. We got a very good question, indeed, in the Q&A session. A question? Yes. So the Thank person you, would, would be curious to know how the data is transferred between the detector and the trigger system via fiber optic cables, via electric wires, or, or some information even transferred as analog signals. Mm -hmm. So ah, okay. this is really a good question. Yeah. So now that when the detector was built, most of the data was brought out on, on copper wires. Now we are gradually moving to the uh, fiber optic networks mm -hmm. for two reasons. One is that this is way much faster than the than the copper cable. The other is that this is electrically uh, insulated from the detector. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to get uh, ground loops. We don't want to listen to BBC News with this equipment. We have other equipments for that. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is fiber optic cables mainly today, right. but the trigger system, the level one trigger system is really put on the, the front end of the detectors. Uh, let me just tell you an example. Uh, for triggering, we, we 
we have several trigger options, I think more than 50 for level one. Uh, one of them is the muon. So the, the muon is, is very interesting because in the, the incoming protons, there are many, many different particles you can have, but the muons. If you see muons flying out from the exact uh, uh, interaction point in the exact timing, then, then you can be sure that something happened. The muon is also very interesting because it goes through the muon system. Of course, uh, uh, where uh, it, it goes through uh, neighboring chambers, neighboring muon chambers, so very localized. These chambers can discuss among each other, the front ends, that, hey, I saw something. Yes, I saw something too. We all want me too. So something uh, uh, with a very, very low noise, we can, we can tell the trigger system that something happened. And this is the moment when the muon system can instruct the readout that, okay, don't drop this, uh, this event, please pump it up to, to, the, to the level one in the, mm -hmm. the control room. So that's how it works. This is, this is a very, very complicated network, network between the detector parts and then uh, through the readout system to the, uh, to the higher level trigger. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, on, on the trigger system, I could add the following that uh, the future actually people are thinking of is sending data wireless. And for example, for the, um, uh, the linear collider where the data rate is much less than what we have here, they think actually you could use uh, no wires anymore. I mean, the, the next step in the technology, but using a intense wire, uh, wireless uh, things. Uh, and, and that may work. And that's probably something that can happen in the future. By the way, uh, from time to time, maybe you hear there are all kind of alarms going off here. I'm told they are not dangerous. I should not panic, but I'm starting to feel a little uncomfortable. Just to tell you, if I run out, uh, you know, if, if one of the next ones, don't don't be surprised. Okay, <laughs> Haifa, if you want. Yes, thank you very much for the nice explanation and uh, talk about the the trigger. So, we move on now. We went down a bit and we are on our way to the experimental cavern, which is the second part of the underground area. Here, I would like just to mention a few things about it is that here where we, you know that we have um, a gas system on the surface, but here we have the last um, part and the last station where the quality of the gas is controlled and then before getting injected in the, in the detector. Here are more about it is uh, you can see that a lot of electronics, of, uh, a lot of um, uh, detectors and cables, etc., and high voltage. So all the series is a series about uh, um, fire detection, detection incendie. And you can see this is just a part of it, but we still have even more. Here also something else is that something to think about is that here at the beam area where we have a lot of uh, radiation, so radioactivity, and once uh, you get out from the experimental area, you can check uh, uh, your, uh, you, you check that everything is fine with you and you check, you measure the, your radioactivity. Now uh, we move on. Here we have a big door, red door, as you can see. This is actually a very uh, nice door, and uh, even me, I dream to enter to go uh, through this door, is uh, the bypass to the LHC, to the tunnel. But actually, and unfortunately, that we don't have the access to enter through this door because we need an extra permission to enter from here, from the radio protection, radi uh, radiation protection people, RP. So uh, unfortunately, we will not go through this door today, but we will keep our way to go to the experimental Cavern. However, something very good, even if you cannot access to the LSC, to the Large Hadron Collider Tunnel, you can imagine yourself in it and you can say that you were in the Large Hadron Collider. <laughs> well, if the frame is correct, yeah. yes, it was. Yeah. <laughs> Better than nothing. <laughs> I've seen it, uh, I can assure you, it looks exactly like that. Yes, <laughs> yes, uh, very yes. Good. <laughs> me too. Though I haven't been there for many years. Uh... Yes. Okay, but we are coming so, closer to the experiment, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, now we have a different 
uh, door to go through. It's basically because the, we need different access permission in uh, different areas. As I said, that the experimental area has uh, higher radiation exposure. So basically you need extra uh, courses and also it's- Yeah, this is also the last point where you can be basically when the beam is on. So yeah. when the beam is oh, yeah. on, this is exactly. the end door. Up yeah. to this door, yeah. so not further. Exactly. Actually the color really makes sense. Now you see a yellow door, beforehand you saw a red door. And if you remember on the surface, Haifa went through a green door. Mm -hmm. Actually, these colors exactly. really do have a meaning. The uh, yellow and red doors are in interlock with the meshing. Oh, yeah. okay. If you break through them, I won't tell you how to do this. You would figure it out immediately if you would see that. Uh, if you break through these doors, during beam, they both shut down the 27 kilometer ring. Mm -hmm. uh, and since we have cameras everywhere, you would need to invent a good story immediately. Otherwise, next day you would find yourself on the plane flying home. Um, so well, this I'll is. I'll live here, but but anyway. <laughs> but the, 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 the police from Geneva would come, and uh, you know, with no, sirens. No, it is even and worse. It is even and... worse. Your boss would come. Oh, oh, <laughs> that that bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you we have, don't do that. Yes. We don't do that. But of course, since since now there is no beam, the yeah. you can pass through the yellow doors without being punished. Exactly. The red right. door. If you would uh, break through the red door. Uh, as Haifa would like to have, and we would have wanted to do that last week. If we would break through that, that would break the so-called patrol. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. That, is, that is a certain procedure to make, through, make sure that, that there is no person in the zone, in the given zone, and that's called patrol. This is a very complicated thing, should be done by several people and should be administered, etc. So if you break it, that's again, somebody would ask, what did you do? <laughs> no, no, safety is enormously important yeah. in this. And uh, if you breach that, yes, you find yourself without contract in no time. Uh, but uh, I think they never had a real bad accident at CERN no, so far. No, but since actually- Since 60 in, years that we exist already. Exactly, but in, in the history of physics, there was such oh, yeah, an yeah, 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 yeah. accident, I know, I know. Uh, but, but CERN, not at CERN. This is what I mean. CERN, so. And CERN is very keen on not to Keeping get on the front record, page yeah. of the yeah, newspapers yeah, yeah. because of this. Yeah, yeah no, not all good. All news is good news. For yeah, us. exactly. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to go to the detector. So I think everybody's yeah. excited exactly. to go through the door. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that's why we're talking like this. Behind somewhere. the next door, the, I find you're exactly. going to reveal that to us. <laughs> the most the most excited part of the visit is coming now we will go and see our beautiful it's actually very beautiful detector and you will see and you will I understand used that, usually i used to say that this How is the, probably the best place in the universe <laughs> exactly it's actually it's very beautiful and it's actually real i mean what you see we hold CMS. Exactly. The, the colors and the, the harmony between the colors and the size, <laughs> and the, it's just uh, majestueux, on the, we say in French. So right. it's uh, really very beautiful, yes. <laughs> so what are our visitors seeing right now? They are seeing here we have the barrel of our detector. And uh, actually, barrel. let me yeah. get... Close, yes, the barrel. Let me get close to the closer to our detector. Let me just just make a, a technical here, remark. Yes, the Haifa was just up to 10 seconds uh, beforehand. Uh, this is called the visitor platform. That's mm -hmm. where we yes. used to, to allow visitors to, to go on during peacetime. However, the virtual visit is allowed to go virtually everywhere in the detector exactly. and that's what Haifa is doing now so mm -hmm. that's the exactly. point where it will diverge from an ordinary visit so exactly our, thank our, you Zoltan our just to say will, something our guests Sorry, will see more our guests will see more than what they would see with their own eyes if they would be down Indeed. there exactly Indeed. exactly that was Actually, just the five second advertisement of the yeah. <laughs> So there is a question. Actually, because, because we have the permission to do so and we have the courses to enter this area. 
something uh, uh, that is very important to say is that our first rule in CMS is safety. Yeah. So uh, yeah, safety right. of the people and the visitors is uh, our first rule uh, for work and uh, and yes. Uh, 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 hi, if I, hi, if I saw there was a question, maybe please. Claire, uh, what, what, what was the question in the chat? We have two questions now. So the first question uh, by Viet uh, says, asks how much is this beautiful detector how much does it cost cost the price i think so it's I priceless like oh that ah, costs that like uh, <laughs> it's priceless six yeah it first of all for us it's priceless <laughs> uh, for the taxpayer however it is um something like six hundred thousand uh or swiss francs i would say six hundred million six hundred million million yeah yeah, yeah. Sorry. yeah it went million. up 600 million of um, it's it's about typically for for the detectors it's about 10 to 15 percent of what the whole accelerator is costing so and that is what we are in in fact it was it was capped on 500 million but that was before inflation uh long uh by the committees and saying it cannot be more expensive than that and we spent every centime that we were allowed to spend. Yeah, yeah, and then, of course, came some overspending. Yeah, so 600 million. Yeah, but, and, and you also have that not all the person powers counted. I mean, you know, like PhD students and it's stuff are not European all counted. European counting. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's yeah. pure material. It's only exactly. material. So. Exactly. But yeah. this is priceless in the sense that this is unique. If we would lose parts of it, it would be very hard to, to remake, especially the magnet. We don't have a spare of the magnet. Yes, okay. mm -hmm. So that's why it is priceless. Yeah, we, we shouldn't break okay. that. And yes. what, what, there was a second Nothing. question, Claire. Uh, yeah, well, we've got lots now. So um, uh, Nile asks uh, about sensor and readout electronics chips. I'm not entirely sure exactly uh, what that's referring to, but I, must, I guess that it's, uh, you know, where do these chips, where are they in the detector? Maybe that's, maybe that's where, the, where the answer is. It depends. Yeah, I think a bit everywhere, but but uh, yeah, exactly. No. It is everywhere. Uh, it, on on the front end of the front end electronics of the of the individual detectors. So it's almost everywhere in the detector. But also we have custom made chips and uh, A6 and also FPGAs outside in the the service cavern as well. So mm -hmm. as Albert to, uh, uh, told, everywhere. Yeah. Great. Um, um, sorry, continue. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I have an answer for, for number one as well. Oh, OK. Uh, well, so David asks, uh, does, does sometimes something like a screw or something fall down in the detector? Yeah, we, we, lost, we lost a scissor two weeks ago <laughs> in the, in the oh. back tank. <laughs> well, uh, of course, then, then we recuperated uh. once the, the scaffolding was removed. Um, um, Noemi had a, a, a nice wristwatch um, at somewhere in the immune system. Still there. During, the still there system. during the last 10 years. Okay. Yeah. We never found it. This is somewhere between the racks, uh, somewhere hidden uh, in, the, in the cable trays. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, it doesn't make any harm, uh, except yeah. the thing that she got it for the, for the graduation. Oh, yeah. um, yeah, so I also when in 2040 she can get it back when we start yeah, dismounting. Maybe this. I bought her another one. Oh, okay, very good man. No, so also when I was a PhD student, for example, I mean, I went into the barrel at the very end just before we closed up and had to vacuum actually basically in the barrel to try to get as much screws out of the lines as possible. Oh, so I went, big, uh, yeah, I went with a big, yeah, went with a big vacuum. I think you're telling secrets here, which I'm not sure we want to, to try show to take so it much out. with the world because <laughs> if you find something yeah. exotic, they think, I. Oh, was not a lost but, screw or something. Yeah, but obviously, if you work there, you lose screws. Yeah. yeah. That's a that's a 1.0 probability event. Mm -hmm. uh, so, as Peter said, before closure, before powering the magnet, we always have a dedicated cleaning up. Yeah. Even though I don't like to do it at home, we do it here with vacuum cleaners, with uh, swipes, with uh, with pure hands to collect all these loose materials, not just the magnetizable ones, but also the cable tie pieces because they might be activated. We don't want to have a radioactive waste. At least but, but, but one so thing much. with CMS is it's, it's extraordinarily compact. It means that uh, there is not much space actually 
for something that you lost not to be detected when you put the detector together mm -hmm. because if you look at it, uh, it it's it's almost every square centimeter is used for something and uh, so it's it's uh, you know atlas has more open space and air or yeah. so which perhaps can collect things but i think we would not be able to close if something of the order of a uh, a square centimeter cube thing would be lying in there because that that's there's not just such a space as anyway. i said that are that are lost items yeah and i guess you'll find with which is not the only one okay. i guess you'll find out soon enough if uh scissors is below or above that threat. So the scissor, the yeah. scissor is recuperated the scissor was a <laughs> delicate <laughs> item we reported we reported to the to the crew that there is a scissor. We we pointed the position, and they recuperated because that might make okay. an interesting thing in three point well, eight. So hi fi, you're showing us this this beautiful picture. Yeah, uh, exactly. You, you see you see the beam line or so and things like exactly. maybe maybe you could that talk is, about that. Exactly, that is what I would like to, uh, right. to talk about. So, uh, yes, as you can see, this is the barrel. So uh, our detector is basically composed from two main parts. The first part is the barrel, and also we have the end cap that I have showed. Uh, that showed it uh, uh, a few minutes ago, and you can see it now as well. I try to show both of them. So if, if you looked into this barrel, like you showed before, somewhere like one to two meters further down is where the collisions happen. This is the yes. end cap. And this the is end... the end cap, exactly. Yeah. So and... basically the end cap, if uh, you bring it to the barrel, then we, we can close uh, the detector. So uh, what are all these brown things there on the end cap? Sorry? If you look at the end cap, you see all these brown things in this circular thing. What are these? The browns, they, they are the CSC chambers. They are muon chambers. That are the cathode mm -hmm. uh, strip chambers, which is uh, basically. So well, yeah, it's a good thing to mention is our detector is called the, C the, the CMS, which is the compact muon solenoid. So uh, it's a compact because actually you lot have a lot of material. It's, st it's still huge in the size, but comparing to the material that you have for the detector, it's actually very compact detector. Also, there is a, the Nesekni is the million because actually, actually we use a lot of uh, million, uh, million chambers. We have uh, several uh, million chambers in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in our, uh, our uh, detector, which one of them is the CSC, as you can see in the picture with all the catastrophe chambers. Also, we have uh, other ones like uh, the gem, which uh, Peter is working on. Peter is working on, which has uh, the gas electron multiplier, as well as the drift tube chambers, as well technology and RPC, which are resistive state chambers. So yeah, you see, we are using several uh, technologies uh, for the million chambers as well. And the one that you can see here is the CSC, as I said. And behind it, we have RPC chambers as well that also use it for the trigger system. So yeah, it's um, yes. In summary, several million chambers used together for uh, different purposes. So on on what what to to put in context with what I showed in in the talk, this is the outer layer. This uh, yes. what you see there, and this red thing is also the outer layer. These are other technologies for muon uh, chambers. So and then, yes. and then in in you see this gigantic coil of the magnet. Mm -hmm. uh, but by so, the way, did, did you want also to go still somewhere else uh, later? Exactly, just, but I will just we have say like you, fifteen minutes or so. I would just say a few words on the barrel, okay. and then uh, we can uh, we can move on. So the barrel, as you can see here, we have the beam pipe which is going between the end cap, if you can see it. This is the, the, the beam pipe, uh, which actually you have, uh, you have the proton beam going there to going inside uh, to collide inside our detector. And then, uh, as I said, that our, one of our uh, most important elements uh, as the CMS detector is the, is the solenoid. And the solenoid, as you can see, is the silver circle there that is as you can see which is basically uh of a six meter diameter if i'm not mistaken and uh, it's actually a huge uh magnet superconductive uh, magnet actually we reached to 3.8 tesla uh for around if i'm not mistaken uh 
18,200 ampere. So, uh, yes, you can imagine, I mean, the numbers and uh, the huge technology behind it. The red is the iron, actually, and you can see that we have layer one gray layer, second layer, and third and one, two, three, and four. So we have four million chambers, and between the red, as you can see, is the iron. The iron is used for the for the for the magnet uh, purpose. I mean, it's a it's a it's a it's a, a technical. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's the return it's the flux return yield. Exactly. Because exactly. The, the magnet is is so strong. It's it's almost four Tesla. That if exactly. you, if if that would not be there, we could not even keep electronics of any sort close there because the magnetic yes. field would just destroy it. Yeah. And if you would yeah. come in the room with something in metal in your pocket, you would be swung to, to some side. So it, it actually damps the magnetic field leaking out of the detector. This is how you should see it. Yeah. It, it absorbs the magnetic flux. Yeah. To a and that extent. is also another. Yeah. Well, and even nowadays, I mean, even if you see now, even with all this absorption, and then if you go to the surface cavern, which is another 10, mm -hmm. 50 meters further, you still like really notice that if you try to open any of the metal doors, it becomes very hard to close them again. I mean, exactly. you can really exactly. feel the magnetic field even there, even if it's yeah. like distant square that this like goes down. But if we are at this view, let me just remark that this iron yoke was designed such a way that it makes a magnetic field, well, it confines the mm -hmm. field such a way that, that everything in this yoke operates at a, uh, iron saturation magnetic field somewhere around two Tesla. So it means that it makes a homogeneous magnetic field in the, the muon system, which is very important for the muon spectrometer and very important for the good muon momentum measurement in CMS. Atlas is different because they, they use a lower magnetic field. They have to to, to, they have to let the, the muons fly longer in order to have the same deflection of the uh, of the path, but since the atlas is, I would say, lightweight with respect to the CMS, there are beams that are that are holding the structure. The beams collecting the magnetic field within themselves. They have a very yeah. inhomogeneous magnetic field. They had to measure from point to point in order to maintain their their, their muon spectrometer's high performance. Uh, these these two muon spectrometers, by the way, the best muon sí, spectrometers sí, that sí, has ever sí. been built. Uh, in the Atlas, okay, the, the uh, systematic yeah. error of the muon momentum measurement is mainly coming from the imperfect knowledge of the magnetic field from point to point. This imperfection is very small, by the way, so they are very, very precise. Uh, in our case, since we have lots of material, lots of iron, in the path of the muons, we might have a situation when the muon just bounces off from, from an iron uh, uh, nucleus. Then in this case, as we call multiple scattering, it might change a little bit of the muon path. This is the uh, uh, dominating uh, uh, systematic error of the muon, measure, muon momentum measurement in CMS. However, uh, I, I, will, I will finish in a, in a sec. However, if we measure, the uh, uh, muon momentum, if we measure the Higgs uh, uh, mass to the same in both measurements, in both experiments, with different, very hugely different systematic errors, we can be sure that we, we, are, we are on a good track. That's a very important part of our... All right. So, we, so we have, we have, we have we a number of questions. Uh, yes. Yeah. While so we've that, got that beautiful view, maybe yeah, you could yeah. answer William's question about the alignment of the detector, I guess, both with respect to the beam pipe and, you know, the individual parts of the detector. Should we go one by one from the top to the bottom? Well, that, that may be a question which is could be directed at uh, how difficult it is it was uh, to, to align the detector. And uh, if the beam pipe alignment is, is critical, I think uh, it, it certainly is critical. But uh, I, I don't know to what precision this is this is done or beam pipe yeah. itself. It's sorry for so. sorry for sticking my nose again. Yeah, no, no, so. Um, so the beam pipe measurement is done by the survey team at at CERN, yeah. and that precision is somewhere around one millimeter. 
we don't need to be precise much so, more because so the, critical, yeah. it's, it is very critical, but, but we, we have to, the beam should pass through. Mm -hmm. uh, however, it is also very important to know the individual detector parts with respect to each other. Uh, again, I'm, I'm trying to advertise <laughs> myself again, sorry. Those red stuff on the, the muon systems, these bicycle frame-like structures belong to us. They are they are a, uh, able to measure the, mu the muon barrel chambers with respect to each other in the bending plane with 500 microns in the non-bending plane uh, with one millimeter maximum precision. This is a very important hardware measurement. Apart from that, we do measurements with muon path as well. This is more precise, but this depends on the tracking algorithm. So, but how do you keep track of the movements of this in a like like expansion with temperature or something like i think for example atlas has a laser system mm -hmm. to, this is this to, is this, this is, is analog to that system. this is not a laser system but this is analog to that okay one measurement cycle i mean no not too technical in details so okay we have a okay one measurement cycle is about two hours mm -hmm. uh one uh, uh, uh reconstruction phase is about 12 hours so after 12 hours we can tell something um this is this is independent from the software or the, the track alignment, mm -hmm. which is a more, bit more precise, but depends on the track algorithm. Therefore, this hardware alignment uh, rather gives a handle on the tracking algorithm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'm, I'm, quick, I'm quickly answering a question I see here in front of me that Kunal is asking. So just, is, is, the detector, yeah, is the detector open now? Wait, wait a moment. Is the detector open now? Yes, this is an open detector now. Normally, this end cap moves in and it closes and it looks like a red cookie box if you <laughs> see it when it is closed. Yeah. But now it is open. Yeah, you can that, see how this noise would go perfectly yeah, yeah. in there. Until and, next uh, week or, or the week after early, I, when this side we are going to close. Okay, so you're, you're in time with this school. If you would have been a month later, it would be closed. Um, exactly. The other and, thing is, a high five for you. A question is, how loud is it there in the hall? Do you have a lot of noise there right now? It's it's actually uh, honestly, uh, it's loud. It's not very very loud, but it's loud. So okay. uh, it's acceptable, let's say. <laughs> but but this is this is mostly cooling systems, I suppose, which are making this noise, right? Indeed, uh, exactly. It's the Director cooling system. Binds, they yeah. think the, the beam would not make much noise if it would be on or not, but it's mostly but cooling. But in that case, Haifa wouldn't be there. No, <laughs> but, but, but she could have. She could leave the microphone to to first yeah. figure out. <laughs> uh, uh, so that's. I should say it. I have a good uh, headphone, so that's why I can hear you very well. Yeah, what yeah, about yeah, I'm, I'm what about childhood. what we're looking at right now? Um, what are these big gray plates that we're, exactly. we're looking at right now? So very good, thank you. This is what I would like to uh, talk about a little bit as well. So this is the other side from uh, the detector. So we have two sides, right? Like uh, a cylinder has a, uh, let's say left and right uh, sides. So now we are from the other side. And as you can see, the silver is the same is, uh, is the magnets here. And inside the, the first layer of canon uh, uh, layer, inside is the hadronic calorimeter, okay? And then you can see a small transition between the first layer and the second layer and the size. And this is actually the ECAL. Yeah, it's uh, the ele electromagnetic calorimeter, sorry. And then at the end, after uh, uh, closer to the beam pipe, where you can see that there you have a brownish uh, uh, circle and a little bit of the gray as well, sorry. Here you have the brownish and a little bit is actually a tractor system, which basically uh, composed from two technologies, which are the strip and the pixel uh, layers. So yeah, so uh, the detector is really uh, full technology. We have the tracker, electromagnetic calorimeter, hadronic calorimeter, and then we have the solenoid and the muon chambers uh, outside the last layer. It's like a yeah. So, the so, so one thing I think is also always impressive if you see this is how many cables there are and how perfectly they're put. Indeed. I mean, you know, like we have these very, very long cables, which are, you know, 100 meters long or so because they go underground and then to the service cavern. And, you know, there's, I don't know how many thousands of them. I mean, <laughs> maybe, you know, but I mean, I remember that it's 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 an incredible exactly. amount. I mean, it's really, and actually we really needed people who really knew what they were doing for just putting these cables, because I mean, even if, 
know, physicists would put these cables, you would never fit because they would be all over each other. But here they're almost perfectly parallel, even when they're so long. And this is really done by people who knew what they were doing and, and were very good at this. And that is one more secret. Uh, these cables, due to the compactness of the detector, we don't have too much space. So these cable cables are under uh, uh, designed, I mean the cross section, at least the power cables are under designed, so they, they create heat as well. So what you see on this, this face as the, as the, the clock, the, the hour signs, you know, these plates, these are cooling plates for the cables. Mm -hmm. yep. That's very important. Let, let me so, take a few questions. Exactly. Here. We go I will on. go under. Uh, are there? I will go underground at the meantime. Okay? okay. Okay. You can go underground. Great. Okay. We had this view. that we come clear. So, uh, Kunal asks, is, is the detector operational now? Well, not right now, but as you heard, we are closing and then it will be operational. In fact, uh, we are taking runs, at least with the barrel detector, as far as I know. Well, even the end caps are taking- Even, even in the end caps, yes. Uh, taking so, cosmic rays. So it, it, it's operational. Why do we open? Uh, typically yeah. we open if you want to fix things, because the only way we can access uh, parts of the detector in the inner part is by taking the end caps away. If there's a real serious problem, we would have to open more and we would have to move the rings around, but that typically we don't yeah. have to and, do. And so now, for example, also, you know, some of these muon chambers were just installed like in this bit yeah. long shutdown. Right. And it's one right, of the right. reasons why we were open. I mean, so. So there was some upgrades installed, yeah. not big things for CMS, no, but but, uh, but enough to keep you busy for two I, years or so. No, <laughs> I think uh, this, this gem installation, I wouldn't uh, go small. <laughs> Uh, so here's an interesting question will the experiment or i suppose the lhc shut down if there's an earthquake yes oh yeah it, it shuts down even if there is lightning no, well, <laughs> for <a> train. <laughs> no i didn't shut down for the train it, it missed the energy calibration with the train but, but uh, if, there is, if, the, if there is if there is if there is lightning if there is a thunderstorm uh, above uh, cern particularly the electric elect, uh, electrical area uh, things shut down and, and the machine shuts down yeah and and this shuts down on fluins or yeah. diesels as yeah. well yeah yeah and, um, and and when animals get into and bite in cables it also shuts down this we yeah. experienced so yes earthquakes for sure because yeah. this is much worse than than uh, small animals and uh and, and lightning but all the 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 things here you see and all the 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 buildings at CERN have to be designed for earthquake return uh, scale number five. Wow. And usually we have here in this region, once in every thousand years, a Richter scale five. Okay. So okay. We, are, we, we are considered as, as, as safe. Of course, if there would be an earthquake, we would shut down and then we would need to, to, to check the-, the, the uh, Actually, the uh, in my- 20 plus years yeah. of history at CERN. I had once an earthquake here effect, but it was in Germany. So it was not actually mm -hmm. right here, but we felt the okay, trembling great. in the offices and that was not uh, a problem for, for anything here. And then I- then Do, do you pick out another nice question? Uh, sure. Um, another nice one by Pablo is how much of the technology, sorry, how much of the technology of this detector was basically handmade um, or did you have any standard commercial parts or, or was basically everything made in-house? I would say the majority is made in-house, yeah. but you know, we do it's, have some- it's collaboration with, yeah. with industry. I mean, uh, you know, some things they have the tools which we don't have, but we have the ideas and I would yeah. say which they don't have. And, and, and so it's a collaborative effort. Uh, yeah. So it, it, it works hand in hand with, with, with industry, but mm -hmm. much of the design of what we do is coming from here but if we see there is some interesting new electronics like fpgas and things like that and then we like to absorb that then we make use of that so it's a, a constant interaction with what's going on with our ideas injected into that and some of the ideas which were injected in for example the lhc uh, the cms experiment i can just give a small uh, site example uh, on, on the optical connectors and, and optical fibers, which we uh, worked with. 
has been used in Lebanon to uh, irrigate uh, lands with water to put an automatic system together that detects it's too dry and then starts a system to work. So you see, sometimes it finds its way in places where you, you wouldn't expect it. That's cool. Maybe you could also tell the story about sourcing the special high quality brass for the, the calorimeter. <laughs> the, the high quality brass with us is, is coming actually uh, from Russia. And uh, that used to be shells of, 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 of ammunition, uh, which under some treaty uh, had to be destroyed. Some, you know, when, when things where we were still more having peaceful talks with, <laughs> with the East Bloc as, as perhaps more recently. And uh, some of these uh, shells uh, had dismounted and were reconverted. The, the, the brass of the shells was melted and put in what you see is this end cap here, which actually Hi-Fi is pointing at right now, which is the, uh, you know, the, the, the thing which looks a bit in the, in the aluminum foil, but it isn't. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. But this I would is like, a, since it was, yeah, Haifa, uh, you yeah, would like ahead. to say something? Um, go ahead. Uh, just, uh, just, uh, uh, if you just give me a green light when you finish with the question, I would like oh, to well, show you. You're there, there yeah. yeah. Why don't you talk? Ah, I mean, you're, perfect. you're, you're on the floor, and I think you're under the detector now, almost. Exactly. So, but there is a very also interesting things that I would like to show here is that. Uh, and it's a very uh, technical challenge uh, that, uh, that uh, we had uh, for our experiment is the, the shaft actually. It's the hole where we uh, uh, passed uh, through the, to put down the, 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 the elements of uh, the CMS detector. And so actually it was uh, quite challenging to, to, to make this uh, shaft, uh, be, uh, which is 100 meter underground, because actually we have uh, the water from the Dura at 70 meter. So to make the hole, they, they had to somehow, uh, they had to frozen out the, the, the ground. And then uh, what they did is that uh, they put the, the concrete. So once the concrete uh, was dry, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they warm up again the, 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 the ground. So yeah, it was uh, quite uh, challenging and also uh, expensive uh, uh, to do uh, such a hole. One of the reasons why uh, it's not a very uh, big hole, as you can see, and uh, somehow it has the, if you can notice, it has uh, almost the size of uh, the hour detector. So uh, mm -hmm. it has almost the size of our detector, so they can pass by uh, uh, the element. And the clearance was uh, between the end of uh, the element and uh, and the shaft that was uh, a very small, around five centimeters. So, so centimeters. yeah. In yeah. conclusion, it was uh, very challenging uh, to put the detector uh, down at hundred meters under down. Fortunately, the, the 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 shaft is not almost the size, but a little bit bigger than the size of the elements. Otherwise, we could have passed each other. Exactly. But, but sometimes exactly. you have only like centimeters of, of 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 clearance between them, and that's also why the heaviest component when they lowered it, it took basically a whole day to lower it just hundred meters underground from the surface going down, because every few centimeters they uh, lowered it, they had to wait to see that there are no oscillations happening uh, with with because this was hanging on cables on the crane because if they would then lower it again it would oscillate more it would hit the wall and then the whole thing collapses and we lost our magnet but that that did not happen fortunately okay hi so you're can, running under the detector now can you also show the feet of the detector uh, the exactly show. indeed okay. yes Peter. <laughs> thank you <laughs> i'm going there yeah. so yes here are the feet of uh, our uh, detector. As you can see here, this is what we will use uh, to the air pad as well. The air pads, uh, actually, uh, we use them uh, to move uh, our uh, end cap uh, to get uh, to close the detector here. So uh, we move it uh, slice by slice. And uh, actually, what we, have, what we do exactly to move the detector is that uh, we uh, pipe air here, as you can see in the, in the pipes, in the, in the orange cylinder. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, you can correct me, it's around 20 atmosphere of, uh, of air to be able to move uh, our end cap, which is about uh, uh, 15, uh, 
1500 so uh, of uh, of tons so yes so uh, i hope the numbers are correct as far as i remember so yes i think these numbers very, are correct very good thank you zoltan for the confirmation so as you can see here we have also something that is very interesting uh, to to show uh, is that uh, the magnet effect even if you are in a long shutdown uh, since uh, uh, two years now well, you can see that the magnet effect is still have it here at the age which is the age effect so yeah. Yeah. you can yeah, see that <laughs> yeah. is, it, yes. is it dangerous so, for your credit cards <laughs> not for the credit card but if you look at this this plate on the top mm -hmm. this is a very appealing place to put your computer down uh -huh. and do the job it's but, not good for the computer no, this it, one it shuts down my screen because <laughs> okay okay so if you want to have a new computer and get rid of the old one put it there and then claim it's broke okay. yeah. <laughs> don't tell it to more from yes i see so a few... by the way if 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 i may have a, a comment yeah uh this air pad so you might imagine that if you put pressurized air the whole stuff gets on an air cushion and this might float so this gets our get, gets us back to the alignment when we close the detector, we, we don't have too much margins, a couple of millimeters, probably centimeters, not, not more than five, uh, uh, to, to put together these, these things. So during the, during the towing of these 1500 tons, uh, we have to have a constant measurement on mm -hmm. the detector closure, otherwise we will destroy something. Yeah. So okay. Let's take a few let's, more questions here. Yeah. Let's quickly uh, go for a few questions which you have here we have from Sayat here uh, uh, given that the energy detector is divided in three regions is there a probability of duplicating the event no so if there is one master which sees all the data from the whole detector the whole time and we have we read out an event only once it's not that the end cap and the barrel independent they are just part of the whole system and there can be for one event, there can be barrel data in it, and cap data, usually it's both, but no duplication. And yes, we overlap in regions where, where they have transition, we know how to overlap the barrel. So it's a continuity we see of the thing. It's not, they see that the detector will be closed as one compact system. And then we look at the whole event and we don't actually, you know, have to separate it in end caps and barrel for that. The GMT looks uh, at the how the often is calibration done? I would say as often as needed. There are some detectors which are not needing much collaboration, the, the, the calibration because they are stable, and there are others which are, you know, suffering from day-night effects of expansion of just uh, the the detector itself. And if you want to have sub-millimeter precision, you need to do it more often. And then, uh, but these things are done in the background. These are jobs which are running while we are taking data. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the accelerator is not full of collisions, so you have always air time slots where which you can use for sending calibration data towards the mainstream. So, uh, and that's put in a database, analyzed, put in a database, and for the user, he gets a nicely, perfectly calibrated detector. Uh, our synchronized. Ah, that's an interesting thing. So that, that's a good question on the synchronization mm -hmm. of, of the data, because if you see, there are 25 uh, nanoseconds uh, between the different uh, bunch crossings coming. And 25 nanoseconds is like seven meters for a particle at the speed of light. So if you produce a particle that starts from the interaction region, it moves out by the time it's seven meters in the detector, already the next bunch crossing is there and starts to produce particles. And so you must make sure that the detectors on the other side realize they are dealing with something that happened maybe one or two bunch crossings ago. And so the timing of the detector is one of one of the big challenges. And we spent yeah. a year and sometimes even longer doing that before we took data to actually uh, figure that out correctly and, and, and make yeah. sure that whatever we see belongs really to the same bunch crossing. Yeah. And we do take into account cable lengths. We do take into Absolutely. account also positions of yes. the detector yes. itself, that it still moves. And but all these things the are being corrected. Electronics. It's, 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 it's a speeds, very like, interesting you know, problem, which took uh, quite a lot of preparation and, and a year to actually do it. Yeah. And we had this incident with the LHC uh, when we saw only few events and then something happened and we were one year off because they had to repair the LHC <laughs> in the very beginning. 
But these data which we had from that incident were of enormous value to help to check the timing of the whole detector. So it was not a lost year, if you want. What is the temperature uh, in the area? Are there changes? It's around 20 degrees or so. 20 degrees. Yeah, okay. we're high phase. Yeah. But in the, the magnet, it's 4.2 Kelvin. Yeah, the, the magnet is I don't know, the ambient. But, but, but she, they mean the ambient, I, I think. Yeah, uh, and oh, yeah so, ambient. Oh, no, sure. ambient, of course. No, right, ambient, right. of course. Sorry, please. It's, 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 a comfortable, it's a comfortable time to yeah. do, the, yeah. I mean, temperature to do a visit. But okay. you do keep all these parts of the detector at a specific temperature exactly. as well, yeah. because so they that's, all that's have exactly. their Right, right, right. right. They, are more, they operate more optimal under certain mm -hmm. conditions, exactly. like the tracker has to be cooled, for example. And uh, okay, minus 20, I think, the tracker, right? That's yeah, yeah, minus 17, 20. So, actually, this is very important since the, the individual detector parts are operated on different temperatures, mm -hmm. the temperature barriers between them. And actually, you know, that if you go from a, a warm to cool, you, you might face the condensations as well. So, we have to, to, to face to them as well. This is, this is really a technical challenge. Uh, outside in the cavern, of course, we keep uh, room temperature somewhere around 20. But the most important thing is the, the detector parts where we have point-to-point mm. uh, -point different yeah. things. Also, we have to pull the electronics. We, I, if I'm not completely wrong, we use something like uh, one or two megawatts for mm. cooling only. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Gentlemen, I'm looking and and Haifa, I'm looking at the time, so I do not know what. Uh, we have we have agreed plans. with Claire that we can run longer, provided you have time. So <laughs> if I. Okay, for me it's fine. I'm just for, wondering for me it's for fine our, as well. For our so people. I start to 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 come up. Should I? Okay. Uh, I would say that take take one more round in this around the detector. And let okay. the people ask questions because this right. is the most important. We are now in the question things. Sure. Yes, I'm not okay. sure I understand I that. that one. You get this. What you need. No, so so, so that I... that was in relation to Nile's original question about sensor and readout electronics chips. Uh, that's. I don't know. Yeah. What was the original question? Do can you Sorry. tell us, Claire? Yeah. Uh, if you click on the answer tab, it just, I, I think we were looking at something at the point in time and then um, then she wrote with sensor and readout elect electronics chips. Um, Which ones? I, I mean, know. each each sub detector is at least several of, of different ones. I, I yeah, don't know exactly. them by heart. And 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 once I know them, they they change them because there are better ones, uh, which is part of some of the key actions they are doing. So I, I wouldn't know that, but I think there is in, in our tech. If, if there is real interest, uh, I, I can figure out what uh, what's so happening. Here you, should, an, you should. Here is an example ah, of 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 what uh, of readout chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For example, okay, yes. just just uncable that and take a few out and show to Nilay. Yeah, but I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. The... Don't touch it. <laughs> no, no, I don't touch it. <laughs> so um, I don't really know the, the, the question. I tried to figure out mm -hmm. from the answers, uh, the answered questions. Uh, uh, Nila, if, if you could, you, if you could post the, the question again, and then I mean, it's not one particular type of processor we use. Yeah. I think there are at least 20, 30 different ones. Yeah. Uh, each each subdetector has designed things with their own choice of uh, processes. Yeah. And then they start changing them because there are better ones and newer ones and so on. And, and within I, a subdetector, it's, yeah. it's uniform, but yeah. not within the total. Yeah. Detector. What I know, CERN has development no. projects no. For, like for several like components, for mm -hmm. example, the opto hybrids. Uh, that create optical signal mm -hmm. for the fiber from the yeah yeah. Uh, you, does you, somebody know how much power we are using? Uh, to operate the detector, it's it's a couple of megawatts. A couple of megawatts only. Well, okay. I know I know so the compared, full CERN. Compared to the LHC, it's it's little. Yeah. I know the full CERN yeah. value. So if you if we turn on everything, detectors, accelerators, my computer, my desk lamp. Uh, in the office, we consume something like 170, 200 megawatts, uh -huh. which is compatible to uh, to Geneva. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. We are we are not a very big consumers. But but, but half of it is when the LHG is running because that's think, about a hundred yeah, megawatts. Exactly, exactly. And the other hundred megawatts. So it's, but this experiment itself is a few, few megawatts. So uh, four or like but but I should add that we have special power lines coming from France, for example, uh, for CERN and for the consumption of CERN. But it's mostly for the accelerator, which is the most intensive yeah. consumer of power and uh, but i guess uh, we will also get a bit of that since this experiment technically is in france what is what is impressive that we are one of those three or maximum four consumers in france where the 400 kilowatt enters uh, in, through the fence mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and one of one of them is SNCF where the fence is everywhere so um we get we get really the high high power line but we consume something like 200 megawatts. By the way, another factoid is that in winter, there is more consumption in Geneva of power. And then they make, in fact, the price for the car, for the, for the power more expensive for CERN mm -hmm. to discourage us from using so much. So uh, CERN has some days of what they call low current uh, usage of CERN. And then some things are switched off, but we don't run them. Uh, Otherwise, it's getting too expensive yeah. for us. Yeah. It's one of the reasons why the year-end technical stock was at the end of the year as well. Yeah, yeah I mean, exactly, because exactly it, right. You know, at the end of the year, we usually switch off for maintenance and stuff, and it's done also at the end of the year because it's cheaper. Yeah, I this mean, is part of our exclusive uh, contract with the mm -hmm. with the French power uh, uh, provider. But actually, this problem. So this was in the past for sure. Uh, in the uh, you know, France uh, used electricity for heating as well. But nowadays, these years, the trend starts to change mm. because people use more and more the, the air conditioners. So this problem will come during the summer as well. Mm -hmm. Right, because at, <laughs> at Slack in California, the same rule applied, but it was during summer. Mm -hmm. In Slack, the price of the current got uh, more expensive during summer, exactly for that reason, because the air goes were uh, exactly. consuming much exactly. more. Exactly, so, so we have to prepare for okay. the, the summer shutdowns. Yeah. Well. How are you doing down there? All is fine. All is fine. So I, I leave the capable guides in charge to say what's what's happening next or well, whenever you I come up. I assume that since we don't have many questions anymore, yeah, you can slowly come up and we can slowly uh, wrap up, wrap up wrap here. Up. Okay. So if anybody still wants to ask a question, now is the time. Otherwise, you know, yeah. we won't have any anymore. <laughs> I think we can let, let I find Mohammed to, to come up. Yes. Slowly. Okay. Exactly. Of you so, can research. So, this. Yeah. I this would like just to say. Invite. Yes. So I would like just to say a small thing in addition is mm -hmm. that uh, we use one entrance uh, to enter, but now we would use another one to to leave uh, the uh, experimental area. So we have two uh, different entrants. We are going from safety. the other. Yeah. Exactly. So also, you may wonder, I have a question to you. How do we have a very good connection 100 meter underground? Mm -hmm. So yeah. So if you can see, here we have the cables, and they are actually the Swiss come. So 100 meter underground, I may have a better connection than you on the surface. Yeah. So even <laughs> if, if, if you nobody work, else is underground, I would say. So that's true, using, <laughs> using it with you. <laughs> so, so what you so, see is called leaky feeder. Mm -hmm. This is a technology for the underground caverns, for example, the, the motorway tunnels as well. Oh, okay. The problem is that everything where this leaky feeder goes belongs to one uh, 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 tower, virtual tower. So we don't have so, so many uh, possibilities for connection like on the surface where you see more towers. Mm -hmm. uh, this also limits the bandwidth. That, that's what uh, part of my joke a just a second yeah. before, but if there are too many people around and too many connections, uh, maybe the, the picture quality that you would see would be, mm -hmm. yeah. would be did you guys hear the music that's when cms starts taking data magic. at the moment we start taking data we play it's a kind of magic so oh, okay I mean, run out of there haifa they're starting to take data it's getting dangerous for you now 
It's actually cosmic data, so we don't oh, have to worry okay, about okay. the rotation. <laughs> I, 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 I actually wasn't aware we switched off the cosmic beam until now, but okay, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> well, this will, this will make the workload bigger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so we will okay. start to, to come right. to the control room. Mm -hmm. yes, okay, please. good, good. Uh, Claire, how are you on the questions? Do we still have some questions out there for us? Uh, no, no new ones. Um, Nile, if you do want to re-ask uh, your question, then feel free. Uh, but we don't have anything else uh, in the meantime. No, nothing on matter most or so because we don't look at that. No, I think everybody's actually, you know, uh, using the, Q &A. the, the okay, Zoom Q&A &A yeah, for yeah. now, which is great. And, you know, people, if you have thoughts if you if you think of something afterwards uh, absolutely feel free to write in the matter most or come up to albert uh, during one of the wonder me sessions as well when he's around but i will not be surrounded by experts so uh, you know may not be this is definitely the best time <laughs> all right no good all right so yeah, do we close up here or do we wait for them? To... Or, or should we wait for Haifa just to, if, to if say If you goodbye? want to see them reappear with us, then, yeah, uh, I think then that we would wait. Be nice. Yeah, nice. That's how we wait. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if I may take the time mm -hmm. for the calibrations, uh, Albert mm -hmm. mentioned the that calibrations might take place when there is yeah. there is collisions, but there is no there beam in the bucket or, or protons so in the bucket. So uh, there are some some buckets that are kept free, kept uh, empty in the in the CERN in the LHC uh, filling schema. This is due to the fact that we might um, I'm not needed to be seen. Uh, this is this might be due to the uh, the the fact that we have to sometimes deflect the beam to the beam dumps, and of course we don't want to operate the magnets or energize the magnets when there is beam in because that that would uh, make it very much radioactive. So uh, uh, magnets turn on when this abort gap, as we call, turns over there. But the abort gap goes around the, the LHC. So sometimes it appears here as well. So that means that we have gating, but there is no collisions. And that's the point where, for example, the ECAL is calibrating. They have uh, four very strong lasers. Uh, and the, the laser beams are directed to the each individual crystals, 77,000 crystals. And in this case, they can turn on the lasers and check the transparency of the crystal, which is very important to know the yield of the, of the crystal, which is important to measure the energy. Mm -hmm. They don't do it 11,000 times per second, only 100 times. Yeah. Yeah. So I think Haifa is now showing the picture wall of CMS. This has a bunch of our collaborators on it, and we use basically the female collaborators to write the letters of CMS in it. Mm -hmm. So all the ah, okay. women who work in CMS are basically in with a white background to basically, you know. Is that to show we don't have enough women? <laughs> I'm not sure. It's to show that the women are extremely important in the experiment. Oh yeah, they they, they, they they mark. Design. Yeah. Very good. Great. We have we have one uh, sartorial question for Albert. Uh, Albert, where did you get that amazing T-shirt from? <laughs> uh, I actually got five or six of them, and, okay. and I. So if you see me tomorrow in the same T-shirt, which is very likely, then uh, it's not actually the same, but it's a new one, a fresh one. So just that you know that. <laughs> but but uh, I bought I bought them in uh, a couple of weeks ago when I was in Croatia in Split. Yeah. Cool. In a shop, in a shop. Just in a shop. Yeah. Oh. They have them in white and black. But the new one is with the same actor or or with some some newer guys. Hmm? <laughs> oh, this is the no, it's the same actor. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry, I can't help you on a web page or something. It was actually in a shop in you uh, in uh, Croatia. Awesome. Okay, so now Hi-Fi is coming back. Yeah, she's, she's resurfacing. Yeah. Is losing network? Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> you say it's from Swisscom, this network. No, no, uh, it, it might also ground. happen oh. that, that she's already back on right. All right, yeah. you survived. Thanks. Thanks to all of you.
Yep, absolutely, guys. Thank you so much. That was that was really excellent. Uh, and thank you to all of the students for asking all these fantastic questions. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you have more, we can talk more on the free time in the in, in, in the school. And we're going to talk uh, a lot more also next week when we go and see the neutrino platform. Sure. Okay. All right. Are Sorry. we good? Here. Yeah. Thanks, Peter. Bye -bye. Thanks, Alton. Thanks, Lumi. Thank Hi, you class. so much, Bye, everyone. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye. And tomorrow we start.